I recently traveled to Northern Ireland with the sole purpose of tracking down 24 unique moments travelers can experience, one for each hour of the day. From food tours to Game of Thrones experiences and coastal walks to haunted castle visits, here's a little taste of what I got up to in Northern Ireland. So we've arrived at Giant's Causeway and I have to say that was a brilliant drive over. We saw more sheep than people and that's always a cool thing. Giant's Causeway is a UNESCO heritage site that features no less than 40,000 interlocking columns. Legend has it that Irish giant Finn McCool built the causeway across the North Channel to accept a fight from Scottish giant Ben and Donner. When you visit this place for sunrise, it's easy to imagine these tales to be true. Formed by giants, formed by God, or formed by molten lava over 60 million years ago? I'll let you guys decide. The reward of coming out here this early in the morning is that you beat all of the tourist hordes and you kind of just have the whole place to yourself. It is 6 in the morning and we are going on a catch and see tour along the Causeway Coast. Can't wait to get started. Alright guys, so we're back from the trip. That was quite the adventure. It was a little bit choppy out there. Actually, what was really cool is that we were able to catch a lot of fish. I think we got 26 in total. And yeah, now we're gonna have breakfast and everything's just being cooked up and I can't wait to tuck into it. A hard earned breakfast, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> It's now 7 a.m. and I am now visiting the Dark Hedges. And this place is probably one of the most iconic spots you can visit in Northern Ireland for Game of Thrones fans. I think the plan here is that I'm gonna suit up and then ride a horse, so that sounds absolutely fabulous. So we're here at the Dark Hedges at Grace Hill and thankfully the sun's out for us. Um, of course the Dark Hedges was made famous by Game of Thrones. We are now standing on the King's Road where Arya Stark um, escaped after the King's Landing on her way to the Night's Watch. It is 8 o'clock in the morning and it is time to go along the Goblins Coastal Path Walk. It is supposed to be like absolutely dramatic scenery and we're going to also be I think having to put on some helmets because of just the type of experience and walk that it is. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to it and let's get going. The Goblins is a modern cliff path that only recently reopened to the public. It is located in County Antrim, just a short drive outside of Belfast. The walk takes you across bridges, past caves and through a tunnel, all the while you're feeling the sea breeze and sea spray in your hair. Well, I have to say that was an absolutely brilliant experience. It's just one of those things that you want to take in slowly because you kind of need your head to be on a swivel. You're looking up at the dramatic cliffs and then you look out to the crashing waves in the ocean and there's interesting flowers and there's wildlife and nature. For my 9am activity, I visited the Carriker Reed Rope Bridge, which links the mainland to a small island. The suspension bridge, made of Douglas fir and wire, offers some of the best vantage points for landscape photos. Be warned that this is not for the faint of heart. My one tip, keep your eyes fixed straight ahead. It is 10am here in Belfast, and it is time to check out the Titanic Belfast, which is easily one of the most iconic attractions here in the city.
This museum offers visitors a chance to learn about the lives of the workers who built the Titanic along with the passengers and crew who made the fateful voyage. So that was an absolutely amazing experience. That is easily one of the coolest museums I've ever been to. It's just, there's so many interactive exhibits and just, oh my gosh, it was phenomenal. Like you need to really budget yourself at least a couple hours, maybe even more to, to really see the museum properly. It's 11 a.m. here in Belfast and I'm at St. George's Market and gosh, I'm feeling hungry. Time for a late breakfast. I'm gonna have an Ulster Fry. For all the foodies out there, an Ulster Fry features soda bread, potato bread, back bacon, fried eggs, fried mushrooms, sausages, baked beans, hash browns, and toast. So the Ulster Fry was delicious. We just had little bite-sized skewers because we're doing a food tour now. But yeah, it was nice to have a sample and I actually snuck in a second one. So it is 12 noon now in Belfast and I am with Belfast Food Tour and I'm just gonna be wandering around all over Belfast, sampling lots of tasty bites and checking out some of the coolest places you can eat in the city. With the burgeoning food scene that is impossible to conquer in mere days, the Belfast Food Tour is a great way to sample some of the best bites and drinks the city has to offer. The four hour guided walk takes you to some of the top food and drink spots around Belfast while giving you a chance to get better acquainted with the city. It is one o'clock here at Port Stewart and we are gonna have lunch at Harry's Shack. And I've heard they have excellent seafood and fish and that is right up my alley. So I am ready to demolish some. This is Harry's Shack right on the beach, Port Stewart Strand, where the sand literally blows in through the doors. And we work really closely with the local fishermen. So our lobster comes from just Port Stewart Bay right here. And the rest of the fish comes from Greencastle, which you can see just over there. I had a hankering for fish and chips and it was the best I've had in Northern Ireland. Come for the food but consider the views, atmosphere and friendly service the cherry on top. Blanche. We are at Castle Ward and that can only mean one thing. It is time for a Game of Thrones experience. The Dark Hedges wasn't the only Game of Thrones destination I visited. Fans will be glad to know that you can visit Castle Ward to experience Winterfell by dressing up in costume and putting those archery skills to the test. And here's the part I've been waiting for. I finally get to shoot. Overall, that was such a cool experience. I think my favorite part was actually getting to put on the costume. So it's 3 p.m. right now in Belfast, and I'm gonna be taking a street art tour to learn about its significance and history in the city. The street art scene in Belfast came out of a very vibrant uh, punk rock movement. Um, Punk rock was particularly popular in Belfast because it was a way of giving young people a voice through music. Traditionally here, young people didn't have a voice, they weren't heard because we had green and orange politics with young people in the middle and no one listened to them. So kids got angry and started picking up guitars and um, singing about disenfranchising and, and um, you know how they, they weren't listened to or heard by the establishment. And the street art scene is no different. It's, it's kind of a young person's way of saying you know who they are uh, what they hope from life where they want to go where they've come from and they're doing it all through spray cans it is 4 p.m here in belfast and i have to admit i'm very excited to be doing this gin and john tour it's going to be all about the gin and i love gin so let's get right into it My name is Phil and I'm from Taste and Tour. Uh, we specialise in food and drink tours in Northern Ireland. Um, the gin jaunt the word, that we're doing today is basically a, a, a walking tour where we visit five different bars trying seven different gins, learning about the bars that serve the gins and most importantly the, the gins themselves. Well, so far this gin tour has been awesome. At the first place we started off with the London Dry and now we've moved on to a Plymouth. And I had a choice between lemon and orange and I went with orange, so time for the first sip here.
so we've arrived in Derry, the walled city, as you can see, and we've got two really cool activities that we're gonna do right now. And we're gonna go check out the walled city brewery and then do a boom board tour. So we're here at the Walled City Brewery and I'm trying one of the local stouts, which is dairy milk. I can't wait to try this. This is a chocolate milk stout. All right guys, the main has arrived and it is a thing of beauty. This is a behemoth. This is the Walled City Burger. And what makes this burger special is it comes with a menthol cheese and also a chipotle sauce. So I can't wait to try my first bite. This looks delicious. It is big in the hands. I can barely, barely contain it. That is delicious. It's like, the burger is so juicy and then just having that chipotle sauce and high quality cheese just makes it so tasty. Just loving it. So after stuffing my beak, and I must say that burger was delicious, it is time to do a little movement. So it's time for me to try boom boarding and this is something I've never done before. Honestly, I have no idea what it's all about and yeah. Let's give it a shot. You're on and how do you feel right now? Awesome, I'm ready to do this. <laughs> and this is the same gear that I used to put on to go inline skating in Canada, so it feels very familiar. I just don't have my inline skates, I've got this board instead. So Sam, how are you feeling? I'm feeling ready, as ready as I'll ever be. Good, so let's look at the white sign. Okay, look at the white sign, let's do this. Okay. Feel it, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I was anything but a natural, but my guide was a pro and made it look easy, so I'll leave you with shots of him instead. Okay guys, it is 7 p.m. and we are at Loch Navarre Viewpoint and I'm just going to be going and having a nice little walk in the woods and I think we're going to have some really nice scenery along the way. It is 8 p.m. and it is time for an outdoor spa experience here in Fermanagh. And I absolutely love going to spas and saunas. So this is right up my alley, perfect way to relax. And it's like, just has a beautiful, gorgeous setting. Like we're out here in the wilderness overlooking a lake. After all that pampering, I made it to Locker in for sunset with a side of roasted marshmallows. It's 10 p.m. here in Belfast. It is time to go visit Cathedral Quarter, which is basically like the arts cultural and basically entertainment and nightlife headquarters here in Belfast so it should be very lively should be a lot of fun it's 11 o'clock here at night in Belfast and we're at Dean's love fish and they have a late menu and so that means we're gonna be able to eat something really good here at 11 p.m. They had an amazing seafood platter and I indulged to the max. Okay, so we're about to go kayaking. It's, it's, is it the moonlight kayaking tour basically? Uh, it's supposed to be, but yeah. with the inclement weather that we have this evening, I think we're going to be rather fortuitous if we see the moon. Uh, <laughs> it's a little, a bit more atmospheric. Uh, yeah, yeah, a little more Irish. Yeah, that's true. So a storm rolled in and we went out anyways, minus my camera, so you'll have to use your imagination for this one. If you're looking for something to do at 1am, be it ending the evening or kickstarting the night, the Merchant Hotel is a great spot for a cocktail and conversation. All right, so it is cocktail time now, and I've ordered the Pisco Sour, which is one of my all-time favorites. It's a Peruvian cocktail, and it comes with, uh, like, a, it's made with a great brandy, and then on top you have, like, kind of a frothy egg white, and then also has lime juice and sugar, so it should be delicious. I'm gonna try it right now. And this is really fancy, they've got a cherry and everything. I finished the night at Bullet Hotel, where there was a live DJ set and a party atmosphere. Good morning, it is 3 a.m. in Bally Castle and I am up bright and early to learn how to make sourdough bread. It is four in the morning. 
I'm going to visit the ghost of Lady Isabella in Ballygally Castle. The story goes that after being locked in a room and starved by her husband, she fell to her death from the window. Mediums have been invited to spend the night at the castle and they reported that there are numerous ghosts. And that's a wrap for my solo adventure in Northern Ireland. I hope this 24 hour travel guide gave you some ideas of cool things to see, do and eat when you visit. In the meantime, wishing you happy travels and until next time. <laughs>